Alrighty, welcome back to the Algebra 1 videos. This is a new chapter, chapter 11. We're going to be learning about rational functions and rational equations. So the next uh, progression in the line, first we did straight lines, then we did parabolas, then we did square root functions, and now we're doing rational functions. So chapter 11 is the title of the whole chapter, not just section 1 video, but now we start section 1 video. So this first section of chapter 11 is all about inverse variation. So the idea of inverse variation is it's a relationship between two variables where when one variable goes up, the other goes down by the same ratio. So this is very similar to something we saw earlier in the year called direct variation, but uh, with direct variation they both went up or they both went down. Uh, with inverse, this kind of means the opposite. One goes up, the other goes down. And most importantly here, it's not by a certain amount, but instead by a certain ratio. So for example, if you go up three times bigger, the other variable will go down three times smaller. The equation for inverse variation is y equals k over x. And let's see why this makes sense. One of the variables is x in the denominator. So if the denominator gets larger, then the fraction overall gets smaller by that same ratio. So if you make the denominator twice as big, if you divide by a bigger number, you get out a smaller number. So this whole idea of one thing going up and the other going down by a ratio um, seems to match up nicely with this equation. And then k, in this formula here, k, it's a numerical constant, so it depends on the problem what it will be. The easiest you'd have is y equals 1 over x, uh, but it could be y equals 5 over x, or negative 8 over x, or any numerical constant there. But the most important thing is the y and the x. This one is in the numerator, this one is in the denominator. So they vary inversely. Okay, so some problem solving tips, and then we'll jump straight into the examples. The first is that neither x nor y can equal 0, because we have this equation, let me write it again, y equals k over x. You can't divide by 0, so x is not going to be 0. If k is a number and x is a number, when you divide two numbers, you'll never get out a 0 either. So neither x nor y can be 0. Okay, the first option when solving equations about inverse variation, you have two different methods. So option 1, first plug in a known y value and a known x value to figure out what k has to be for that particular problem. Then once you know k, it's constant in a given problem. So you can use that k value to figure out, w answer any questions that they ask you about the scenario. Okay, the second option is a shortcut because since you know k is constant, you don't even have to find it. Option one was to find the value of k and then use it because it's constant. Option two is to just notice that if you solve this equation for k, which means you multiply both sides by x, multiply both sides by x, these guys cancel out. You're left with k equals x times y. Now this is constant which means x times y at any moment in time has to be a constant. So you can say at the beginning or under, under some scenario x times y is equal to x times y under some other scenario uh, in the same problem obviously. So if they tell you like uh, at the beginning of the day x is this and y is that, at the end of the day x is this, what's y going to be? Well you don't need to find that constant of proportionality, you can just plug them into this shortcut formula. Um, so I'll do some examples where I use both option 1 and option 2, and you can get an idea of which one you like better. Okay, uh, tip number 4 should be a no-brainer here. Always check your answer for common sense. So you know with inverse variation that one of them is going up and the other is going down by a same ratio. Okay, so if you get the math wrong, then you look at your answer, you'll be able to easily see, wait, it didn't go up or down the way it was supposed to. So use the equation and the math to get the exact answer, but use common sense to get a ballpark estimate on what you think should be happening. And then the last thing is just to remember that when we had direct variation, it was y equals k times x, both in the numerator when one goes up, the other goes up. And just to keep in mind uh, that inverse variation, while related, is a different kind of thing. All right, some examples. First set, determine whether each table or equation represents inverse or direct. So with inverse variation, remember when one goes up, the other goes down. So from here to here, we doubled. And from here to here, we got cut in half. So this is times 2, and this is times 1 half. That relationship is nice. That seems to hold. Let's try again. From here to here, we times by 2. And from here to here, we times by one half. And then again, same thing here, we double, here we cut in half. So that relationship holds, then this is an example of inverse variation. Okay, how about over here? Uh, let's solve for y by dividing both sides by x. Um, divide by x is the same as multiplying by one over x. So here we get y equals two-thirds divided by x. 
Okay, this is definitely inverse variation because it matches the equation for inverse variation. That constant of proportionality is two-thirds. The product x times y is constant. Last one here, let's solve for y by adding 2x to both sides. So here we get y equals 2x. Uh, this is direct variation. You can tell because the equation is y equals kx and k is 2. Uh, so the first two are inverse where one goes up, the other goes down. Next set of examples, assume that y varies inversely with x. Write an inverse variation equation that relates x and y, then graph the equation. So we know automatically that y equals k over x because they told us assume that y varies inversely with x. So I can plug in x and y. So y equals 2 when x equals 5. Okay, so I can plug in y is 2 and x is 5. And this allows me to solve and get that k equals 10. So my equation is y equals, I plug in 10 in place of k, and I get y equals 10 over x. So my general equation is always y equals some number divided by x, and I can use this particular information to find out what that value of k is. In this case, because y was 2 and x was 5, I get that k is 10. Okay, it says now graph the equation. Well, to graph this equation, you can make a t-table. We're going to learn how to graph them an easier way in the next section, but for now, you can just make a t-table. So, let's just see here. If x is, here's x, here's y. If x is equal to 1, then 10 divided by 1 is 10. So I go over 1, up 10. If x is equal to 2, then y is equal to 5. So over 2, up 5. Uh, let me try here, if uh, I go over 4, 10 divided by 4 is 2.5, over 4, up 2.5, it's going to be something like that. Then if I go over 10, 10 divided by 10 is 1, so over 10, up 1, um, I'm just going to kind of fill in the shape. This is going to curve down like this, so it's a pretty cool looking graph goes higher and higher on this side and lower and lower on this side. It turns out it will never cross this axis because you can never divide by zero and it will never cross this axis. Well, actually, it will never cross this axis because you can't divide by zero. It will never cross this axis because any two numbers when you divide them will never be zero. Okay, you could also do the same exact thing but plugging in negative numbers. If I plug in a negative, I get out a negative. So if I understand the uh, remember of uh, reflections, if I go negative 1, negative 10, that's a reflection. Negative 2, negative 5 and a half, that's a reflection. Negative 10, negative 1, I don't know, negative 5, negative 2. All these points are reflections. And so on this side, I get a similar shape, just reflected over the origin. Okay? So this is the general shape of this kind of graph. Um, you get the constant of proportionality by multiplying x and y together or solving this equation, and then you can graph with a t-table. But don't worry too much about graphing right now because, like I said, in the next section, 11.2, we're going to learn uh, tricks to how to graph them much more easy. All right. Write an inverse variation equation that relates x and y. Assume y varies inversely as x, then solve. So this is a very standard problem. It's very boring. Uh, it doesn't have any context, uh, but this is the way that the problems are usually presented to teach you the method. So if y equals 124 when x equals 12. So we know that we're dealing with uh, inverse variation. So we start with y equals k over x. I'm going to do number 8 using the method 1. I can solve for k, and I get that k equals x times y. I can plug in y is 124, x is 12. 12 times 124. Let's grab a calculator real quick. 124 times 12. 1488. Okay, so my equation now is y equals 1488 divided by x. Okay, so part one said write an inverse variation equation that relates x and y. I've done that. I found the constant of proportionality k using the given information, and now I can use that um, to solve. So I want to find the y value when x is negative 24. So to do that, I just say y equals constant here, 1,488, divided by the x-coordinate, which they tell me is negative 24. Now I type in my calculator, 1488 divided by negative 24, and I get negative 62. Okay, so this is method one. You're using the information given to you to find k, and then you're using k to find the second bit of information. The shortcut would have been um, 
Okay, let's go down here for the shortcut, and then I'll see if I can clean this slide up. So the shortcut would have been to know that x1, y1 equals x2, y2. So x1, y1 is the first times the first x and y coordinates, so 12 times 124 equals x2, which is negative 24, it's a negative, multiplied by y2. Divide both sides by negative 24, and I get that the second y-coordinate is negative 62. It's really the same thing. If you notice, this x1, y1, this part right here, is actually just your k value. And then you're just setting k equal to the new stuff and solving. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, the shortcut is the same thing as the old way. Let me just offer one more way to think about this. The x-coordinate is going from 12 to negative 24, which means it's getting basically twice as big and negative. So the y value is going to have to get twice as small and negative. So half of that 124 is the 62. So you can, if the numbers work out nicely, you can just use proportions to think about it. If it's getting twice as big on one variable, then it's going to get twice as small on the other variable. Let's do one more example that's not going to work very easily um, with shortcuts, or with um, doing it in your head because the numbers aren't Actually, the number yeah the numbers are not good. So y is 3.2. So let's use the shortcut. So we know x1 y1 equals x2 y2. So x1 is negative 5.5. Y1 is 3.2. Okay, plug in. We're trying to find y2, and we know that x2 is 6.4. 6.4 and y2 we don't know so you just snag a calculator you multiply these two by each other which is going to give you negative 5.5 times 3.2 okay that gives me 17.6 negative and then I'm just going to do it all at once here divide by 6.4 so make sure you know how to do this in your calculator yourselves but you can obviously write down the answer negative 2.75 as my y coordinate so let's just check common sense the x value got smaller. Nope, nope, the x value got bigger. How much bigger did it get? Just a little bit, a small ratio bigger. So we expect the y value to get a small ratio smaller, so 3.2 down to 2.75. So that seems reasonable. Okay, let's now do the word problem. Let me clean up this slide a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to do this word problem. The manager of a lumber store schedules six employees to take inventory in an eight hour work period. The manager assumes all employees work at the same rate. Suppose two employees call in sick, how many hours will four employees need to take the inventory? So because we have less workers working on it, we expect it will take more time. So let's define our variables. Let's x equals number of employees, and let's y equal a uh, number of hours. Okay, and we can say y equals k over x, because we know that if there's less employees, it will take more time. And so now we can solve this equation, let's probably just use a shortcut, yeah? So k equals x1, y1, which equals x2, y2. Okay, so x1 is going to be the employees at the beginning, which is 6. y1 is going to be the number of hours at the beginning, which is 8 hours. Okay, so x2 is, now we have only 4 employees. So how long will it take them? Let's call that y2. So we can solve 6 times um, 8 is 48 equals 4y2 divided by 4 divided by 4 and y2 equals 12 and our unit here is hours so let's see if this makes sense because we have only two-thirds as many employees it will take um, an additional amount of time so it goes from 8 hours up to 12 hours and that ratio is of course two-thirds second thing if the district supervisor calls in and says she needs the inventory finished in six hours how many employees should we assign so now let's look at part b here so for part b uh, we have that um, six hours is the y value so we know that y2 has to be six and we're not sure what x2 is supposed to be so we'll use the same shortcut here on this side we know it's six times eight which is forty eight on this side now we don't know x2 so we'll put x2 here and uh, we do know that this is 6 though so we divide both sides by 6 divide by 6 and x2 48 divided by 6 is 8 employees 
So if it takes six, hour, six employees eight hours, then it would take eight employees only six hours. So that kind of variation is true for inverse variation. One goes up, the other goes down. All right, that was a lot of examples. Um, I hope it makes sense, but let me know in class if it doesn't. I'll see you there.